In this world, it's all about style, and style is all about me. Basically, how I choose to cut my hair, or the way I dress myself, or how I would design a gaming avatar, all the way down to the fact that I have my phone wallpaper match the colour of my eyes. Right. But what about cars? How much can you really do to make it your own expression of who you are? You know, there's lots you can pick from the dealer, the type of engine, the wheels, the paint, but how much can you really do to make it your own? We spoke to Magnus Walker, the king of car customization and one of the icons of the new Need for Speed game, to talk about what it's like to really make a ride your own. Hi, I'm Magnus Walker. Welcome to my garage. I always go with my gut feeling. If it feels right, I go ahead and do it. I've never been one of those guys that second guesses or asks other people, what do you think? People have always been updating or backdating Porsches because a lot of the parts are interchangeable. I think a lot of people relate to the builds that I've done because it shows that I'm adding my personality and character into the car. And I'm not afraid to alter something from the way it left the factory. And I think that's what separates me from quite a lot of other people in the Porsche world. But I also think that's a common thread that connects me to a lot of other automotive enthusiasts. Now, growing up as a kid in England in the late 70s, early 80s, I watched a lot of American TV. Naturally, Evil Knievel was a big inspiration, but so too were Dukes of Hazard and Starsky and Hutch and Chip. So that was sort of how my love affair with America and especially LA was born, was through watching American TV. That was probably also where my love affair with American muscle cars started. The color blocking, for example, I'm a big fan of flat black hoods. Well, a lot of vintage race cars from that area would have a flat black hood to basically reflect the sun glare off the dash when you were driving. So those are elements that I've sort of tweaked and been inspired by and incorporated into my build. There's something very cool about the Americanization and Stars and Stripes and Captain America and Evil Knievel, so that was definitely a source of inspiration for me with those colors on 277. People have been hot rodding cars since day one. I think in a sense some of the details that I'm building into my cars now are hot rod elements. The Louvre deck lid is really a hot rod touch, you know, like Louvre deck lids cropped up on cars in the 40s and 50s. I see inspiration everywhere. I'm not so Porsche centric where I'm unable to find inspiration outside of the Porsche world. So I'd been featured in Speed Hunters a couple of times and I was approached probably about a year ago initially about being in the Need for Speed game. One day I was here in the warehouse alone by myself, there was no one here and I literally heard the gate sort of knocking over there and I go to the gate and who should be there but Ken Block. So he came in, we had a little discussion and I thought well Ken Block's in the game, I like Ken Block. To be honest he's an inspirational figure to me in the automotive world and Ken Block essentially was the deciding factor of me being in the new Need for Speed video game. Even though I've never been a hardcore video gamer, here I am in the new Need for Speed reboot as one of the five icons in the game, and I am the speed icon in the game. I'm sort of an inspirational, motivational character. So for me it felt great to be, you know, in the company of Ken Block, Nakaya-san, the Risky Devil Dream Team, and Hiroshi from Tokyo, Japan. I think all car guys like to add their own personality. For me, a car is more than just a vehicle that takes you from A to B. It's sort of an expression of what the owner is about. It's a common bond that unites all passionate car culture people together. We all speak that same language. And I don't know of a single mark out there or make of car that someone's not customizing. To me, it's a true honor and a privilege to own the cars that I own in the garage. It represents to me personal freedom to be able to customize my own Porsches in my own way. Along the way, if I've created a little bit of a following or signature style, even better. But that wasn't my goal. People seem to have responded and related to my individuality and the builds that I've brought to the Porsche mark. It's a polarizing thing that I do to these Porsches. You either love them or you hate them. 
But ultimately, I built for myself in the real world, the same as you guys will build in the virtual world, in the new Need for Speed video game. Because really, you just got to please yourself, and that's what I've always done. I've sort of done it my way since I was 10 years old, living that dream for the first time with a Porsche poster on the wall. I haven't changed. The hair may be a bit grayer, the beard may be a bit thinner, the hair may be a little bit longer, but inside, I'm still that 10-year-old with a love for Porsche and a love for customizing, and I don't think that's ever going to change. I'm no different to a lot of other people, a lot of other enthusiasts out there that modify their own cars, whether it's a Porsche or a Corvette, a Ford Mustang or a Subaru. We're all car guys and we all like to modify them. So according to Magnus, who really is the master of automotive expression and hair as well, customization is all about expressing yourself on the road, taking something that's well established, like a body shape or a material, and changing that to suit who you are. So, Drew, you and I are gonna take a classic 70s Porsche 911 and make it look exactly like Magnus's 277 Porsche 911. And that completely defies the point of everything Magnus just said about customizing a car. It's about individualization, about customizing it to your own taste, for your own expression. If we do exactly what he's done, that's completely against the point. No, we'll start in the same place. We'll take that 1970s 911, okay. but we're going to turn it into something that's unique to us. All right. Okay, so first things first, let's actually change the structure of the car to make sure before we change any colors or any right. decals that we've got it exactly the shape that we want. Okay. So this is the stock shape at the moment. I like it already, but I think we can do more with it. Hmm. We could jump into a full body kit, um, which is fine if you want a quick one-stop shop to change it to something radical. Like that, for example, the okay. R RWB or Rauwelt Begriff is a Japanese. It's extreme. It is. It's a Japanese movement by Nakai san, who's yep. one of the icons in the game. And they do this handcrafted process to Porsches that give it a very unique kind of feel. A lot lower, a lot wider, a lot more oh, those aggressive. Those wheel arches, they're immense. Yeah. It looks a little bit like that 993 GT2 that I've seen in real life. Yes, it has the similar air intake on the rear. Mm. wing there it is is a very unique car but yeah. it's one that's already out there yeah, I think we need to do our own I think we need to do our own so okay. let's let's jump in so let's start at the rear all right I'll take care of the rear all you right. take care of the front okay I don't want the full RWB body kit but no. the trunk lid does look pretty awesome the trunk lid is enormous yes so I'm gonna go with this all right RWB enormous trunk lid yeah. right over the intercooler okay yeah so that's a good start i'd say should we change the exhausts let's do the exhaust okay so it's either about the straight out the back or straight up i'm i'm kind of feeling these okay done purchase and equip brilliant right onto the wheels onto the wheels <laughs> let's go for the rims now, what are you feeling for rims? Uh, I still like the stocky shape of a rim, not these sort of very, you know, narrow racing wheels with skinny tires. I think something thick well, there's a... is, is classic. Okay, well that's... That's the traditional Fuchs style wheel. Yeah. That looks nice. I think we can get a twist on that rather than going full modern. Okay, we're, so we're in the muscle car region but I'm starting to feel these. Okay. Ooh. I like them. I like that. Yeah. That's a bit different. Okay. Okay, let's go with that. Okay, stance. All right. Very important in how a car looks. All right. Do we want it riding high, nice and comfortable, or do we want it slammed right down to the deck? Well, I mean, let's definitely see what it looks like way down on the floor. See, I'm actually already preferring this. It looks like the RWB, but without, you know, it, it's, it's nice and low. It looks like a racer all the way down on the ground like that, but it doesn't have quite so much drama going on at the front. Now, what do you think of this look? Uh, I think it's certainly getting there. I think it, at the moment, it, I feel like it looks a bit like a drag racer, like mm. it's designed to go very fast and straight line. <laughs> See, now this is dangerous. What do we want the rear license plate to say? Um, well, it's not a ghost. 
Uh, what's our custom Porsche called? How about... <laughs> Dread. You know, like Drew and Seb. <laughs> Let's call it Dread. I like Dread. It's uh, <laughs> beautiful. Okay, let's, uh, should we give Dreb some color? Let's give it some color, because I am sick of this baby puke green. Okay. Color-wise, we've gone with, I guess it started as a British racing green and ended up in more of a Baja blue. I like the Baja blue. I, the g racing green just didn't work with the Porsche at all. Uh, I think Baja is it's, it's classic in its own way. Uh, but then we designed what became, I guess, the palm tree on the front. Uh, which started out as horns and then became a very slightly off-center palm tree. Uh, but we have nodded to Magnus on the front bumper as yeah. well. So we've got his design on the lower part of the front bumper and we've offset the color as, a, as its own thing with the, with the red and the white as well. Yeah, so the whole front end of the car is a bit more Magnus. Mm. And then we go over the top to, not unlike Magnus, a union flag on the roof, to the side decals. The Comets. The Comets. Because this car goes very quickly, like Comets. Like a Comet. Exactly. I, I see what you've done there. I thought it was a genius design idea. They looked like ice cream cones at first, but then if you look at them as Comets, then they're, they're actually much cooler. Well, continuing around the back, it gets a lot more aggressive with those massively flared wheel arches. Yeah. And that RWB spoiler with the air intakes in it. it well, the is RWB vast. also has uh, some great design work on the top of it. Uh, so that everyone knows this is Dreb. This is Dreb. Yeah. He is our ride. He is forever Dreb. And then is is the fish also Dreb? The fish the fish is trying to escape Dreb's engine bay, it would appear. It's not a hospitable place for fish. No. No. So this is what we've been able to knock up in just a few minutes of playing around with the creation tools. And uh, as you can see, we have made it our own. Imagine what you could do if you actually had some time and creativity. Oh, you could do so much, so very much. But I still like our, our cross between the Mini and the Baja and the Comet and of course the, the massive RWB racing spoiler. Um, it's got elements of all over. You've got Japan, you've got LA, you've got England, and I think all together it creates something very beautiful. It's ours. That's the best I can say about it's it. It's definitely if, ours. If nothing else, there, we are never going to drive this down the road in the game and bump into another one quite like it. Well, frankly, Drew, I think that Dreb was not only a beautiful Porsche 911, but uh, also drove incredibly well. And that was before we even started messing with all the bits under the bonnet or the rear bonnet. The boot bonnet the boot lid bonnet. thing. The boot bonnet lid thing, yes. yeah. Now, we only just scratched the surface of what we could do with the tools available. There is a vast amount of creativity that you can put into these cars. And it's important. You're going to be taking this car out and racing it against thousands of people online. And you want those people to judge you by how that car looks even before you've lined up on the starting grid. So if you really want to let your individuality shine through, there's a real opportunity here to make every car in the game exactly your own. Uh -huh. So if you're going to race in Need for Speed, make sure you use the tools available to you and make your ride your own.